This video is brought to you by my friends over at Pianote. Check out the link in the description and get a completely free 30 day trial and start your piano journey today. Hi everybody, Levi Clay here, and I'm back again to talk to you about the subject of ear training. Now, for those of you that have followed my channel for a long time, you'll know that ear training is kind of my jam. It's kind of my bag. It's how I make my living. But I am by no means an expert when it comes to ear training, because of course, I have spent my life playing the guitar, which is a wonderful instrument. It's a wonderfully expressive instrument. I love it incredibly. You can, I'm still surrounded by guitars. Uh, it's absolutely fantastic. But what I've learned in the last couple of years is pianists have amazing ears, or certainly when well-trained, pianists have amazing ears. Because of course, as an instrument, it's an instrument that allows you to play chords and melody at the same time quite easily. We can do it on the guitar, but it, you know, a lot of work needs to go into be able to do that. But of course on the piano, you have that ability. It's a very dynamic instrument. And I've been learning piano, of course, for the last couple of years, uh, which has been fantastic for my ear training. For those of you that have been keeping an eye on my transcriptions, you know, I'm always putting the chords above uh, transcriptions now because it just, it's easier for me to do that. Uh, my ear is much more tuned into that in a way that it probably wasn't 10 years ago when I was more focused on transcribing guitar solos. So yeah, learning the piano has been fantastic for me. What I find most impressive when I think about the concept of ear training, what it really means to have a good ear, is the ability to hear a song and immediately play it. Now, of course, as a transcriber, when I hear a song, I'm not immediately playing it, I'm immediately starting to write it down, but then I still need to learn the song, I still need to conceptualize, understand the song, and commit the song to memory. But amazing ear training skills would be to be able to just hear a song and play it. And that's where we come to today's guest, the unbelievable Mr. Frank Tedesco. Now, uh, I highly recommend you go and check out Frank's channel. He spends a lot of his time on Omegle, just listening to people uh, talking and then asking them for song requests. He listens to the song on his phone and then plays it. And it's a wonderful display of a couple of things. Firstly, the impact that music has on us emotionally. There's nothing quite like seeing somebody completely blown away by seeing a piece of music that they love instantly recreated in front of them. Because the chances are they're not a musician. So to them, it's, it's tantamount to magic. Uh, but of course I am a musician and to me it's still tantamount to magic. I'll often sit in bed and watch these videos and be moved to, to near tears at people's emotional responses. Uh, and of course the other thing is it gives us an insight into what true, true ear training mastery is. So I reached out to Frank and asked him if he could spare a little bit of time for us to talk about the subject of ear training and how he thinks about ear training and how that might differ from us as guitar players or whatever your instruments happen to be to see if there is anything that we can learn from such an incredible, incredibly talented musician. Now I say incredibly talented, Frank wasn't born with this skill, this is something that he has put the work into. And the whole point of this channel is telling you, you know, you can do these things. You just have to practice. You have to put in that time. You have to sit down every day and make it a labor of love, knowing that every little bit of work that you put in takes you one step closer to that goal. So if you want to be like Frank, you can do that. You've just got to put in that work. I really do believe that. If you put in the work, you will be better tomorrow. And if you keep doing that, you will get where you want to be. Anyway, so let's have a listen to what Frank has to say. <laughs> this is a really fun conversation. And here he is, the man of the hour, Mr. Frank Tedesco. How's it going, bud? I'm doing very well. Thanks for having me, man. I really, really appreciate you taking the time. Um, as I mentioned earlier in this video, you know, I'm legitimately a, a really big fan of everything that you do. And, um, you know, being from the ear training school on YouTube, kind of to a degree, uh, degree myself, it just seemed that when looking for the right people to talk to about what real life application of ear training is and how you go about doing that and also trying to delve a little bit into the into your head to see when you're listening to a song what it is that you're hearing I thought that you were just one of the best guys to uh to do that with but um yeah why don't you tell people who you are where you're based and uh we will ask you a few questions sure man uh well my name is Frank Tedesco uh I'm on the YouTubes I was born and raised in New Jersey but now I live in Colorado 
Um, I went to school for piano and music composition. So I have a degree in music composition uh, from the Hart School of Music. Uh, I also have a certificate in Japanese from uh, a university in Japan that I went to. It was like a four-month certificate. So it's not as fancy as it sounds, but <laughs> I like mentioning it. I'll just, I'll just keep it honest. I like mentioning it, you know? Um, yeah, and I, I uh, make YouTube videos. I've been making YouTube videos for about 12 years now, uh, but it's only in the past year and a half or so that I've been doing what I'm currently doing, which is going on Omegle, uh, which is a website where you're basically paired with a random stranger from somewhere in the world, and I ask them if they have a song request, and then I will typically listen to a portion of it on my phone and try to play it back for them, more or less. I mean, I didn't pre-ask you this, but uh, how do you feel about me giving you a song? <laughs> We could do that. <laughs> I do have my phone on me, so that could you, be You are an ear training master. I mean, you have a, an incredible ear, so um, why not put you on the spot? And, and if, it, <laughs> if it doesn't go well, we can just pretend it didn't happen. But that yeah, is just a, cut it out. That is a good question for you. So before we talk about like what you're, what you're thinking when it comes to <laughs> listening to music, um, <laughs> what, should, what do you feel your success rate is when you're on Omegle? Like, how often do you find yourself in a situation where you, you listen to a piece of music and you go, nope, not a chance? Oh, uh, um... Well, that's like a different – so you're not talking about the percentage of people that, like, I keep in a video. You're talking about the percentage of, like, song requests that I can do? Yeah. How, how often do you listen to something and think to yourself? Because working as a transcriber, I take almost every job that comes my way. But occasionally I'll listen to something and think, that's not going to be worth my time. Like, I'm not going to be able yeah. to – that's going to take a lot more work than uh, than I think is going to be realistic. And, of course, when you're making YouTube videos, like <laughs> – Right, so, right. I – I give it the old college try for just about all of them. Uh, the only ones that I can't do are occasionally I'll get a, a certain type of rap music that there's no, there's nothing melodic. Like there's sure. no melodic component, not even a bass note, you know? Yeah. It, so it's like a very specific style, but it'll be like, they'll be like, oh, play this song. And I start listening to it and it's like a drum kit and rapping or something. Not even like a, like a piano hook yeah. or something like that. So I'm <laughs> like, hey man. It's not that I I, I can't do it because there's nothing to latch on to. I can play you the drum beat, yeah. but, you know, so those are like the main ones that I usually have to ask for an alternative. Um, that's pretty much the gist of it. Um, sometimes people will ask for classical music, and some of them I've, I've been lucky and I, I know from you studying know. them in the past. And some of them I'll just listen to and, and dissect a very simplified version of it. Cool. Um, how would you, this is uh, a kind of aside, how would you say your reading is compared to your ear training, your ear skills? Oh, my ear training is much better than my reading. Yeah. I did some, I do reading when I learn like classical music, but for like sight reading, I just never really, I don't really get too much enjoyment out of it. Um, not nearly as much as I did from ear training stuff. So I, I put all of my attention on ear training. Good. We like that answer. <laughs> yeah. um, okay. So the, the subject, ear training. So um, obviously you don't know my approach to teaching this sort of stuff, but I am very much of the opinion that a lot of the ear training stuff that's done in schools, the interval recognition side of things, feels a little bit more pitched at the school being able to test you in how good your ear training is. To me, I would much rather my students are able to hear a seventh and immediately play it and then me say, what interval is that? And then hesitate. <laughs> than them to be able to say, oh, that's a seventh, and um, uh, not be able to immediately play it on their instrument. So what would you say, um, or, or how do you feel, if you were to be looking at helping somebody to get into a position like yourself where you can listen to music and just play it? Like, What, what are your thoughts on ear training? How, how would you go about doing that? The way that I've approached it is, for me, music theory is like incredibly important. I, I use that all the time when I'm learning stuff by ear. Um, so like knowing what key you're in, um, is super duper helpful. So I, I talk about that a lot, like being very comfortable with not only intervals, like I actually am a big proponent of, of learning intervals. Okay. Um, I think it's super helpful, at least the way that I go about, uh, listening to songs, especially when I'm listening to, to melodies, I'll hear, like keep the tonic in my head. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times I'll like go to whatever note they're singing and, and relate that to the tonic, you know? So that's okay. instead of like, you know, if you have a melody that's like in C minor and it's like, something like that, yep. right? I hear those intervals all in relation to C yep. as opposed to like, you know, A flat being a fourth away from E flat. Yep. Like I know it is, but my brain just hears it as like going back and forth from the root note. Yeah. So for me, the years of actually practicing those intervals and, and hearing them has been super duper helpful. Yeah. I 
sometimes on that thing i i, <laughs> I always remember i've been playing music for the best part of 20 years now um yeah. and you forget how much time you put into things in the early years like i put all of my time into those things i just found that um the the leap let's say from practicing your intervals to having the confidence to sit down and actually transcribe a piece of music you know i went to music school myself degree in music myself and i a lot of my peers we all went through the same classes but the the confidence level that they would have to sit and transcribe a piece of music still it's a huge piece of work for them to undertake let alone just yeah. being able to do it on the fly so um mm. yeah uh that's what a good about- point actually it, it is pretty difficult because <laughs> it's a, quite a jump right it's like yeah. right you know your intervals now learn by ear yeah it's yeah. like well what what about in the middle <laughs> yeah and and that middle yeah. thing for me is a is a very difficult thing to uh to put into words because i'm not sure i didn't intend to end up i don't know about yourself but i didn't intend to end up where i am in music i just started transcribing a lot of music and then i found that after i'd been doing it for three or four hours a day every day for a couple of years um i felt relatively bulletproof i felt comp- nothing intimidated me when it came to listening to things and and writing it down and of course i am coming from that background of writing things down more so than hearing it and immediately playing it but the goal of course would be hearing it and uh, immediately playing it i'm not sure how you make that transition other than just putting the time in doing it over and over and over again did you what you're doing now is that where you wanted to end up with things not really i i didn't start playing piano until i was 14 actually i had been a drummer for my whole life and then found piano relatively late you know i started when i was 14 i had pretty much four years to get ready to try to apply for a music school um yeah and i was able to do it Uh, i really loved composition right off the bat so i I started composing at like the same time that i started playing piano and a lot of it was you know just things it, it was like my my hands were sort of ahead i was a little behind on the music theory um when i first started because I was I didn't know any theory yet, right? But I started sure. playing piano. So even though I was writing stuff, I didn't really know what I was doing. Hmm. Um, so I was just going based off my ear, which was really interesting because, you know, when I go back and look at some of my very first compositions, I was actually doing some really cool stuff. And, you know, you have to be really careful with music theory, even though I think it's absolutely crucial after, after a certain point. Like, you know, you can reach a plateau um, in music without knowing any theory, in my opinion you don't want to get boxed in by it either, Mm. you know, and that can definitely happen. It's like, Oh, well I can't do this because it's parallel octaves or something like (laughs) that, you know? So it's, it's almost like a case of you learn the rules so that you can find creative ways to break them. Yeah. Oh, and the chances are that the deeper you go into theory, you'll eventually learn rules that help to explain why that thing you did in the first place was something that was, was cool. (laughs) Exactly. And that's how you, I think that's how you find your musical identity is finding your own ways to break the rules. You know, any, any great musician or artist that you listen to, you find things that's like, oh yeah, that's a, that's a very blank person. That's a very blank thing that he does, you know? Yeah. Uh, Do you play any other instruments? I mean, you mentioned drums, but um, piano other than piano? Um, like percussion stuff like marimba xylophone all of those things a little bit of guitar and even less bass so you're all about that rhythm which is <laughs> i am about the rhythm yeah. absolutely I mean, i'm always saying that to to students uh with with transcription the area they all struggle in is is rhythm like it's it's relatively yeah. easy to hear a melody and certainly not play it immediately but be able to sing it back um but yeah. when you you're asking for detailed analysis of rhythm, being able to hear rhythm and understand what that thing is going to look like. That's always the struggle area for people. So it's yeah, interesting that you've sure. uh, done a lot of percussion. And uh, yeah, who who needs guitar when you play piano, right? I, right, exactly. <laughs> it's no bias or anything, but yeah. it's the best. I mean, I, I agree with you, and I made that the mistake of not doing it until like two years ago, and uh, and now I wish I could turn back the clock and just focus yeah. on that. <laughs> oh, it's never too late, man. It's yeah. never too late for anything uh, to start with piano. Um, but I guess to first further answer your question before like bridging that gap between like intervals the the way that i always tend to break it up is like like four components for me it's it's like general music theory it's interval recognition it's chord qualities getting familiar with all the different chord qualities major minor diminished augmented all the seventh chords um and things like figured bass like chord numbers mm. you know like the nashville numbering system yeah, for yeah. example that is probably the most crucial thing for me as somebody with relative pitch and not perfect pitch, like the way that I go about it is, you know, if I have, if I don't know what key it's in yet and I'm listening to the song, I will 
establish the framework for it without a key, if that makes sense. So I'll be like, okay, this is like a, a one, six, three, seven. Yep. And then the melody is whatever it is. I don't know what key it's in, yeah. but it doesn't matter because I, I know the framework. Mm. And then as soon as I hit a note to get my reference note, yeah. I'll just apply all of that music theory to whatever key it's in, sure. which is why it's really important to be comfortable in all 12 keys. Cause sure. it's like, if you don't know B major <laughs> and the keys in B major, it's like, well, you're going to have trouble. You, know? well, you just don't put that one in your YouTube video. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Or you could do that. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> um, yeah. That's, it's interesting you say that actually, because w when you watch videos of you doing that, you do often, you'll listen for a bit and then you will just, you'll just play one note. And so you're saying that when you're doing that, you've, you've kind of already tracked the, the uh, numerical, uh, chord progression, the Roman numeral chord progression, and you you understand what the melody is in relation to the tonic and the like, and then this one note, because it's not always that you'll hit that one note and that happens to be the tonic. It's like you right. hit that and then... Rarely, it rarely is the yeah. case. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but then you can immediately go, oh, okay, well, the, this, the, you know, I was a third off where it should be, so we're not here, we, we should be here or wherever it happens to be. Um, and exactly. And then you, you're just comfortable with it. Yep, and that's that's why it's... For anyone listening, that's why it's. I, I really would highly advise you to take things that you're learning, even in just like one or four measure increments, and play it in all twelve keys. You know, mm. so if I if I'm listening to a song, and I'll just use a random example, like um, in C minor, right? So like, right, something like that, right? If I'm listening to that, it doesn't. You, the idea is you want to be able to play that in all twelve keys. Right? It doesn't matter what key. Right, so it's a really good exercise to be prepared with what you're listening to in all keys so that mm -hmm. when you do hit your reference note and you know what key it's in, you can take that knowledge and just, boom, put it on top of that key. So it's almost like the best piece of, of advice you could give is don't rely on the transpose button. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. But, but, you know, again, that's... It takes five seconds for me to say that, but it's taken me like 15 years yeah. to actually, because it's, it's hard, you mm -hmm. know, and that's, that's the thing. There's no, I've not found a shortcut for that sort of stuff. It's just years of practice, you mm -hmm. know, and, and you get better slowly over time. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, most of the people watching this are probably going to be guitar players. Uh, it's easy for us. We're a shape-based instrument. We need to change key. Right. That's pretty easy yeah. to do. Um, but yeah, uh, listen to everything Frank's saying here. He's he's spot on. Like I'm going through these struggles myself with the piano. Obviously, I have all the theory knowledge, so I understand. I know all of my keys. I can play all of my keys on piano, but more more thought has to go into it, and you just need to transition into that point where it's automatic. You don't you don't put any thought into it. Uh, yeah. And and I don't know if there's ever a point where there's no thought because I'm still thinking mm. like if you ever watch my videos, like when I'm listening, sometimes the stranger will be talking and I'm like, I have like a <laughs> zombie face because I am like, you know, I'm <laughs> going yeah, like yeah. that and trying to really even when I'm playing, too, it's like it's it's really the other hard part for me is like when there's multiple sections of a song. And mm. that's something I've only really been able to start doing the past, I guess, year or two is being able to like listen to like three different sections of a song and remember them all. Mm. Um, and that, I guess it's just from doing it for so many years that I've bit, like expanded my memory, but that's really tough because it's hard to not like mix and match different sections, you know, like yeah. the bridge with the chorus and the chorus with the verse. Sure. You know, so it's a, it, there's a memory aspect of it as well, like remembering the order of things. Um, and also if you're a pianist, like being physically comfortable in the key, cause he, if, even if you know the key of E major, and maybe this is something, um, that you're going through now, since you just started piano pretty recently, like, even if you know the key and you know, what's going on, like your hands might not be able to keep up with the theory quite yet, yeah. you know, which is why doing like scales and arpeggios in all 12 keys are super helpful too. So that if you get something that's in C sharp minor, you can go with your arpeggios and, and not have to focus on the technique and yeah. put your mental energy towards the actual memorization of the song. Yeah. Oh, I, I mean, a to technique. I'm, I don't like teaching technique on the guitar because there's so many people that, that teach that. There's sure, there's sure. enough people to go and do that. So when people come to me, it's never ever for technique. Uh, and because of that, I almost forget the importance of technique on your instrument. But learning piano, and, and actually I also play Hammond organ, which I fell in love oh, with cool. probably even more than the than the piano. Um, it, it's, you just, 
your brain is like a million steps ahead of where your hands are in those early stages um and yeah. it, it hurts you know what you want to do you just don't have the the technique to to execute it so um. absolutely it's the same thing with me uh even when i started playing some guitar it's like i know that my finger needs to go here but yeah. like i'm hitting the wrong string yeah, and it's yeah. the most frustrating thing ever yeah. Yeah, unfortunately, there's no shortcuts. You've just got to go through them. <laughs> right. If you find one, let me know. Yeah. Um, okay, so how do you feel about being put to the test? Let's see Let's see this all in action. Okay. It's like horrible. <laughs> like, I actually have no idea. Yeah, yeah, sure. Okay. Uh, <laughs> what do you have in mind, my friend? Um, how about, uh, there's a song called I Never by uh, Melissa Kelly and the Smoking Crows. So I usually restart. Do you want me to like walk you through what I'm doing? Yeah, actually, that would be I... that would be really cool. Sure, sure. So I know we're in E major because mm -hmm. I hit a B, uh, and I hear that from E. I really heard the C sharp actually. Right there. So I heard that that was a a whole step down from C sharp right. minor, and I know that we're in a major key, so that's the relative minor of the major key. So I know we're in E. <laughs> and I would just kind of hang out, just listen, yeah, yeah. you know, enjoy it a little bit too. So for me, it's like, it's like a two part thing, right? I like to establish chords, yep. a general rhythmic sense. And then I like to listen to the melody. And for me, I, I like doing the chords first because it can establish a framework that uh, makes the melody make more sense. Yep. As opposed to the other way around. That's just the way I do it. You know, the, the beautiful thing is there's more than one way to skin a cat. But <laughs> that's just You've had great approach. results, though. <laughs> sure. So a whole bunch of things. I'm hearing a, a basic pentatonic scale with the melody. I heard we went to that that flat six, minor six. I mean. really nice this is a cool song she'll be happy to hear that <laughs> yeah 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 give it one more listen you know the more times i listen to it the better job i can do which is beautiful yeah. on omega it's a true test because it's like <laughs> you're fighting against the attention span a yeah, lot of yeah, times yeah. so it's like you get one listen <laughs> so i mean we can just go from there and and i can approximate you sure. know I stayed quiet there because I had to edit in a round of applause after that. <laughs> I 
I always find it really strange when I hear you finish playing something and you're on Omega, and you'll have like three people just go woo. (laughs) (laughs) Right, right, right. Um, Yeah, that was that was beautiful, and it's uh, it's it's amazing to see it done. Like I've always said to people, Mm. the reason they should watch your channel is um, it reminds, or at least it reminds me of how powerful music is. Uh, you're usually doing these things for people who aren't musicians um, mm. and when they see something that they love just immediately recreated like that it you, it blows their minds and uh, I'm a musician and I see it done with a song I love and and I'm same thing I'm almost in tears it's just like it's so beautiful so thank you very much for that it was that was <laughs> oh I appreciate that man yeah that was... it was a great song request it, it's it's a lot of fun to do it's a lot of fun to do and that, that was a really that was actually a really good request for the conversation we've been having because it had like a little intro Mm -hmm. right it had like so the way i broke that up is right i had like this four chord intro right yeah and then i heard this little hook in the beginning so i just i I immediately heard that and just kind of stored it away Mm -hmm. because like i know that's the hook it's not the melody but i want to remember this because it sounds like i could apply that to all the I wanted to. Yeah. So that can be like a nice little improvisational tool if I ever want to yeah. like noodle around. It's like, oh, well, bring out the hook, you know? Yeah. And then I try to keep that separate from the melody. So when I heard the melody. Right. And then there's a, after that, there's like a little bit of approximation, but yeah. it's all pretty close to that pentatonic scale. Yeah. So you get the gist of it, you yeah. know, a couple more listens and you can nail it down a little bit more. Um, but it's similar to sight reading, you know, like you find the the really important parts to hit and sometimes you have to like forego sure. certain details in order to expedite the process. Um, and then that minor, uh, where was it? Oh, I love that. That's, yeah, I'm glad they did that. It was great. It was yeah. great. So yeah. that was a nice way to end, end it because, you know, a minor four, it's, yeah. a, it's a classic ending. <laughs> Right. So you're almost obligated yeah. to do that. <laughs> <laughs> um, awesome. Well, uh, I will uh, not take up any more of your time. Uh, again, thank you so much for giving us a little bit of your time. Um, I hope people that have taken a lot from that and uh, that you're going to go and subscribe to Frank because he's amazing. Um, tell everybody what they can, uh, where they can go check you out and how to best support you. Oh, sure. Uh, well, I have a YouTube channel. Uh, that's probably the, the best way. It's just Frank Tedesco, my name. I also stream on Twitch quite often. I do a lot of live learns on Twitch and it'll be a little more in depth than I do on YouTube. Like I can actually listen to it for a few passes and give sure. a longer performance than like, you know, 30 seconds. Um, yeah. I also have Patreon. I, I have a bunch of stuff. Um, Patreon, Instagram, discord. It's all just my name everywhere. And uh, I will, I will add this. Your Patreon is an impressive Patreon because uh, you give away a lot of stuff to your patrons. For example, tell us what you give away. Yeah, so um, there's a couple different tiers. The main one is tier two. That's like the fan favorite where you get um, audio and the MIDI files for every single piano piece that I play on my Omega videos, which is I think over like three or 400 now. (laughs) Um, And a copy of my, I think I have it here. I have a piano album called the Wanderlust Piano Collections, which is probably mirrored right now. No, it's it's correct. Oh, it's correct. For me, it's mirrored. Okay. but yeah, so that you get a, a free, well, free, uh, downloaded <laughs> PDF of that. It's free, only 20 bucks. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, a bunch of other stuff too. Early access to merch. Um, I have a Patreon-only Discord channel, things like that. But the main one is, that people seem to really like is the the MIDI files and the audio. Yeah, it's a, it's a very interesting learning tool, you know. Um, and uh, That's good to hear. As much as I want to say to people, don't use MIDI files, just transcribe it. You, it takes a while to get your ear to the point where you're comfortable to do something like that. So, mm-hmm. you know, having that leg up yeah. is um, is fantastic. So, yeah. Even got- just using it as a reference, the MIDI, yeah. you know, like, like doing it, if you try to transcribe something that I did, you know, do it first and then you can use yeah. the MIDI as just a reference to touch base. Yeah, which is absolutely awesome. So go and support Frank. He's awesome. Uh, Fra- Frank, thank you so much. Uh, I wish you a fantastic day. We'll continue to watch you. Um, you have an awesome one. Thank you, Levi. You too. I really appreciate you having me on and thanks for your time. What a fantastic conversation from a fabulous human being. You know, I reached out to Frank uh, last week to ask if he would maybe be able to donate a little bit of time to talk to us about ear training. And he was so happy to to do that. 
put aside the time and we had that call and it was just it was so wonderful that somebody would you know be so generous with their time and uh, you know just a, an insight of what a lovely guy Frank turned out to be after the camera stopped rolling we just kept talking for another half an hour about all things music so um, yeah that was a, a real eye opener for me and you probably saw it in that conversation there was definitely a point where I talked about um, ear training and the idea of intervals and while you know to me intervals are very um, they're an integral part of how I visualize my fretboard and how I teach and how I hear things from a learning perspective there has to be I'm of the opinion that there has to be more to ear training than learn your intervals then you can do ear training skills um, and yeah for Frank to say well I think intervals are really important reminded me as I said in that interview that Sometimes your perspectives change over long enough periods of time that you maybe lose sight of some of the value of some of the skills that you have been working on. So yeah, of course, if anyone that's done any of my ear training classes will know that I do teach those intervals. I do think it's important that we learn them, but it's really important that we start progressing beyond them. It's really important that you start moving into that world of, okay, I know what a fifth sounds like, but can I hear a chord progression? Can I sing a melody in relation to that chord progression and then play that melody? Um, and, you know, I did this, but it could be it could be this, or it could be um, it could be this. However, you whatever instrument you happen to play, can you hear something and then find that thing on your instrument? It is a magical skill to work on, and I would encourage you to go and work on it. Uh, this video, of course, I did mention right at the start, was brought to you by my friends over at Piano. If you want to be, you know, like me and get a little bit better on the old keyboard, um, I did that primarily by looking at um, the educational resources on Piano. Uh, fabulous educational website with loads of video lessons from um, lots of great teachers, but Lisa Witt. She'll get she'll get you started. She's absolutely wonderful. So please do go and consider checking out the link in the description, getting a completely free 30-day trial. Um, do go and check out Frank as well, obviously. Like, subscribe to Frank. Even if you have no interest in learning to play the piano, I'd be very surprised if you aren't moved in some way by the content that he's making. It's fantastic content. Um, I don't consume a whole lot of music content anymore. I, I don't like to do my work when I'm not working. I like to consume things away from music, but I spend so much time watching Frank's videos because he really is excellent. So uh, one more time, big round of applause to Frank for uh, being so generous with his time. Um, and lastly, if you want to be a real badass, you can check me out on Patreon, link in the description. Be like these awesome people. You can get a weekly uh, guided practice routine. You can get weekly guided ear training sessions. And if there's a slot available, you can get a uh, monthly private one-to-one -one lesson with me, which um, can be a lot of fun. Um, I do need to update this list. I'm seeing some names on there or names that should be there that aren't. But um, sorry for if your name should be there. I'll get it added as soon as humanly possible. <laughs> um, and if that doesn't suit, you can also check out one of my books available on Amazon. I obviously have quite a few of those available with my latest one guided practice routines for guitar available now thank you so much for checking this video out i hope you got something from it and i will see you for another video very soon laters